caught it on fire, that's all. The Oregon Trail, 58 of them died. Independence Rock. I drowned in the river. Climbing now. 1850. Stand up in the ER. Three snakes. Here I thought. <laughs> So many cars. Mama's birthday picture show. <laughs> How cool is that, huh? It's a whole new world. Which I'm in love. Sleeping on the hood. It's beautiful. Buffalo Bill. Danny Oakley. Hey, Ethan. This is the last Sitting Bull was wearing. Hey, 1890s. Going into the tunnel. This is really cool. Redwood trees. Ralphie struck gold. Man. That's scary. <laughs> How many feet can you Wow, look at that. More redneck than ever. What in the world? He abandoned the entire town. Ghost town. Empty shells. Bam man is going. A DG. Dinosaurs. Wow! That's sketchy. Short bus. Middle of nowhere. It's Route 66. Beat up, aren't they? That's crazy. There you go. 22 feet tall. Golly. Cool building. 72 ounce steak. Biggest steak. No, thank you. <laughs> Two warnings. <laughs> Escaping inmates. Crowbar time. Murder hornet. Cars on that building. Government's on to us. Wait a second. Barefoot Sally. Oh no. Over 220. Oh my gosh. Look at the. Oh, cool. Time for dinner. Tex. Oh, nobody here. Big cat like. Yeah. Manna from heaven. What the heck? Ponies are ornery. Found in a cave. John Wayne Museum. Trigger here. True Grit. And safari wagon. Wow. Died within three years. Spotty shop from his grassy knoll. We're beautiful building. A tree in a shopping cart. It smells like Bucky's. <laughs> Woo! Shot a gun at us. Big ship. 17,000 unidentified bodies. That's unfortunate. Cannons here. Lit in caves. <laughs> wow. This is gonna be really hard. Michigan? Done a lot of things different. No hard feelings, but. Oh, in my mind. That was awesome. My little tato. I know my cars. Kinda got annoying, not gonna lie. Spot on. Bad luck state, break down again. It's a lot, it's impeccable. We're gonna break down. Stressful? Next level for me, very expensive. Excellent. Was having problems. Hi. Hello. It's very stressful for me, fussing and farting. He loves his outfit. You're so hairy looking. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude channel. We are back with our final installment of our 7,000 mile road trip around the wild west of America. We're copying the trip that my great grandparents, my grandparents, my dad, and my uncle did in 1976 in a 72 Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser station wagon. Now we couldn't afford that, so we bought a 92 Oldsmobile station wagon. And I'm trying to take my kids on the same trip that my dad and uncle went on. They're the same age they were. I'm the same age my grandpa was. My wife's the same age my grandma was. We're hitting a lot of the same stops they did, trying to match up the pictures. But this is the final installment, the fifth video. After going through over 5,570 video clips and deleting out 19 hours of footage, I finally cut down this last video. It just took me three weeks to do. Can we make it all the way home in our $2,700, 31-year-old station wagon? Let's go find out together. Good morning. This starts day 14 of our trip. Two full weeks, longer than we've ever been anywhere. Hey, we got another elevator with a door. Doesn't make sense to me. We're gonna go get breakfast. Hopefully they got the steamroller. And today's mom's birthday. So it's <sighs> gonna be birthday celebrations all around. It's mom's birthday. Hey, what a good birthday, huh? Yeah. He's been trying to ride in the front of the car the whole trip. He's sitting in the back. I'm sitting in the front of my birthday. <laughs> Maybe they'll give her something special for breakfast on her birthday. It's slim pickings this morning, ain't it? There's like nothing. And the pancakes are like tiny, tiny. <laughs> I have to cut his pancake for him. You got his pasta too? He's never gonna make it. We're just gypsies now, you know? 14 days on the road. So I went to check the oil. We drove 4,800 miles. This thing still hasn't used any oil at all. But look what I found. The paper towel I had sat right here was sitting on the exhaust trying to catch fire. So that's not good. I guess I shouldn't stick a towel right there. It's gonna end up on the exhaust system. But the fact that this thing has went 4,800 miles without using oil, that's incredible. We almost caught it on fire, that's all. And the bug action here in Wyoming is incredible. It wasn't even like that. No, it wasn't like that at all. Our windshield is just peppered with bugs. So we're gonna have to get Ralphie on cleaning the windshield this morning. 
He's a good windshield cleaner. Stuffed it like over to the side. You got burn us down. I know. Oh my gosh. Baby, I always wanted to give you what you wanted on your birthday, so that's why we're going to a rock in the middle of a field in Wyoming today. Awesome. <laughs> I've seen a historic marker sign. We're gonna figure this out. That's what the brakes trying to get in here. <laughs> It says that where we're at here, the Bozeman Trail came through here, the California and Mormon Trail came through here, the Oregon Trail came through here. It says it would take them five months to travel across the country. They were about a third of the way through when they got to this point. It says some of the Mormons headed to Utah would be pulling hand carts the whole way. I couldn't imagine. This is the Platte River crossing, which is where people on the trail would have to cross. And it was $5 to cross in a wagon, but a lot of people didn't have the money, so they would try to cross it. it said one group of Mormons, 58 of them died trying to cross that spot. Cool bridge here. Oh, you can still that must be the old road, huh? Yeah, you can still use it though. So all throughout Utah and Wyoming, we've seen these symbols on mountains. So that's the different ranches and that's their brand, I guess. I can see it from here. We're at Independence Rock. Golly, it's big, isn't it? So they got a rest area here. They really don't have much signs for this. Honestly, do they? We had to stop here for like water and stuff. Uh, when you played Oregon Trail, you had to stop yeah. here for water? No, I, stop here. I never made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it this far. Finished it seven times in one year. Okay. I barely got past the river. Uh, that's a good old game. I played it too. But so this was the halfway point. It said on a lot of people's journey. It's named Independence Rock because the first people that stopped here stopped here on July fourth. We're here at the same time that most people would be coming through here. You wanted to make it to Independence Rock by July in order to make it to, I guess, California in time before winter set in. So it says that William Sublet named Independence Rock on July 4th, 1830. That long ago, that's incredible. Look, are we climbing this rock? Are you allowed yes. to climb it? They are. Hey. I figured you couldn't get on it. You need to be a rule breaker at some time in your no, life. I think that guy said you can come up the backside easier. So must many people climb it? I guess you can climb it. Who knew? I brought my climbing shoes. Awesome. Same. There are signatures here from 1824, which have now faded away. I just realized we're on the old road. See this? It's still got the lines on it. So the old road came right up against the rock here. That's probably the trail they took, you know? Probably got paved and then replaced. That's pretty neat. I didn't realize that. You can see it right here on it where somebody wrote it says old oregon trail 1840 something squeezy's already halfway up the rock without asking so this is what it used to say old oregon trail 1843 to 1857 it's almost faded away now i said i'm gonna have to play oregon trail when we get home it's probably been 20 years since i played it it's really fun i've never beat the game before i've beat the game twice so and the other times I drowned in the river. I think that game's really old, like from the 80s, maybe. Hey, I think pay. I think it helps if you are a doctor for some reason. Like, I feel like that helps if you're a doctor. No, if you're a banker, you get more money. And you if you're a doctor, the Indians, if you're a doctor, if your family gets sick, you can help them. Look at all the carved in inscriptions here underneath those. Whoa. Oh, this right there, yeah. Even this marker here is old, 1914. Look at all these 1920s. Yeah, there's tons of carvings in the rock here. If you look way up there, there's some. I see one that says, I think 1937. It's hard to tell because a lot of them have washed away, but a lot of these plaques here were placed a long time ago. Man, it's really grown up back here, isn't it? I expected the trail to be a little wider and more mowed down. We've decided to start climbing now. It's not too hard to climb. It's not very steep, really, on this side. Here's some over here. It looks like they're more recent, 1970s. It flattens out up here, huh? Yeah. Wow. There's one from 1935. This one's 1926. The one under is 1920. Graffiti from over 100 years ago. W.J. Horton, July 3rd. 53 that might be 1853 there it's funny that we're here at the same time they came through here this is really cool isn't it that you can come up on here i don't really think you need a drone out here where you're at you can see every direction there's the old bridge for the old road it's kind of incredible that the old road tucked right up against independence rocks like that there's one from 1864 
1853. 1862, 1850. Oh, wow. This is so cool. I wonder how long it took him to carve these in. 1853. 1866. Looks like 1854. 1852. 74. Probably 1874. 1874. 1862. 1930, probably. They never expected it to be 100 or 200 years later, did they? 1846. This is incredible. A lot of them from the 1860s and 50s. They're everywhere up here. 1865. I think it's one of those problem board things. Maybe. What's really crazy is in a few years, some of these from the 1830s, you won't know if it's 1830, 1930, or 2030. It'll be 200 years. Everybody's barefoot but me going down this rock. Yeah, grip. Mom's got it in, I'm talking four low lock over here coming off this hill. It's my birthday. I don't want to end up in the ER. You did it, Mom. I did it. I thought I was going to have to do the boot scoop. <laughs> my post is raw now. <laughs> Wawa had her web feet kicked in coming down it. Those are crazy. Would you just look at it? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at the size of those. Those look are like better. 10 times the size of what we have at our house. Wait, this trip just got better. Mom found a flower. Oh, he's a fat little frog. He's a baby. Look how fat he is. Oh. He's so cute. He is. This is from a Boy Scouts of America trip from 1930. That's so long ago. Imagine dragging a hand cart from Tennessee here. No. I don't know how anybody did it. Mules, yeah, horses. I people had a lot more motivation back then than they do today. 100%. So we just passed some people on the trail and they said they just saw three snakes right down there in that high grass stuff. So we're gonna turn around and go back towards the car because daddy's too scared of snakes to go through there. But we made it all the way to the back of it. I would appreciate it if they would build a sidewalk like this all the way around the rock. You're like in the grass the whole time. I'm so sketched out by snakes. It really freaks me out. Chickened out, comment below. Well, we're gonna do the same thing they did at this rock, which is stop and take a break, eat something. Almost 200 years later. I heard daddy raised you on bread and bologna. Is that true? <laughs> if we only had us a good red tomato, we'll be all right. <laughs> Real red tomato. I knew it. I knew you were going to do it. When I saw you still had it gear, I thought, she going to slip up and put on the brake as soon as I get near the handle. <laughs> Merchandise is now available at thesleeperdude.com. We got stickers with free shipping. We got shirts from U-Small all the way up to 5X. Thank you to everybody that's been buying shirts. We really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. It must have been incredible to see a whole row of wagons heading right through here. All these trails went through the same intersection down here. We're passing the Devil's Gate. These are all big landmarks that they looked for along the trail. There's the Devil's Gate right there, that gap in the rock. The Antelope Cafe. Is it still open? <laughs> It doesn't look open, but I think it may, well, there's a gate though. That may be their, their house now. So we're actually gonna cross the Continental Divide two more times just on this route right here. I don't know how many times we've crossed it on this trip. We've crossed it a bunch already. I love the little van here. Thing's awesome. Four wheel drive too. Look at that wall. I would drive the thing everywhere. This, this is an old, some sort of store. It's shut down now. Another old bridge over there. I love those old steel bridges. <laughs> Look at that. It's not bad. Oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All for water. Was it worth it? Yes, it was. Oh, hello. And we're coming up on a whole herd of windmills here. Fur is the eye can see. Man, those things are huge. Let's fall in. We got Fierro action. Hey, this thing is on white letters, son. Nice. I haven't seen the World Furry Doggy forever. Why do I have ones? I need new World Furry Dogs. So we're actually cutting off the interstate here 
and going down towards Fort Laramie, Colorado, instead of going through Cheyenne, it's a little bit quicker route to go. And maybe we'll see some cool stuff, like a bunch of cars over here to the right. Look over there. Look, they're just stacked in piles. There's so many cars over there, stacked like five and six high. They're all newer cars, looks like, though. Mom has done her first pass, and it's a Ranger, Ralphie. Pass Ranger. We are in Colorado now. Woo! It literally instantly changed. For sure. Look, it's like all of a sudden trees and grass everywhere. That's weird. It's a cool little cafe. Well, we made it all the way across Wyoming, like diagonally. There wasn't a whole lot there, was there? Not a Pretty, but empty. I just realized we're over 5,000 miles. Oh my gosh. I hadn't even been looking. I hadn't even looked either. We're actually 5,100 miles. The plan was supposed to be 5,000 mile trip and we're still 1,800 miles from home or something crazy. Look at them down, because it's not even been three weeks yet. I know. My math says it's probably gonna be closer to 7,000 miles. Mom's been letting her eat. Keep driving, keep driving. We ain't buying uh, no baby chicks or fresh eggs. Uh, such She's such a sucker for advertising. That man is serious. Look, he's got his high lift jack, his shovels, five fuel cans. We're in a traffic jam a little bit north of Denver. And the Buffalo Bill Cody gravesite closed at five, so. Happens to not see it in the morning. Yeah, it's not looking too good. That thing is awesome. Very cool. I guess we're gonna spend the night in Denver. Instead of going there, we're gonna go find mom a Chinese buffet for her birthday, cause Woo! she loves them and so does everybody else in the car. Maybe tomorrow we can go to Buffalo Bill Cody's grave. There's some other things around town we might be interested in doing as well. There's the Argo Gold Mine. So we may go by there if we have time. But first, let's go eat. You can see the big city of Denver up ahead, the skyline. We have arrived. At the promised land. The Chinese buffet. That's what we were looking for when we were in Jackson and never found it. All right, hopefully this is good. Mama's birthday night. We gotta have a special meal. I like this one. Oh wow, it's pretty big, huh? Is it good, Mom? Delicious. It's her favorite. All Ralphie eats his fruit. He's, a, he's always been that way. I told Wawa I need to get this CD and she got cracked up. This music. That was good, huh? Very, very, very good. good birthday dinner? Very good. Happy birthday, Mom. Thank you. We've been there. That may be our old one. He may own it now. Looks like he's going the same way we're going. I'm proud of you, sir. I'm proud of you. Give me my thumbs up. Do you want to go see Indiana Jones at the movie theater? Yes. What? Yes. Is that yes. what we're doing? We're going to the mall. Yeah, they have a picture show there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I planned at the beginning of this trip that we would hopefully go to the movies and see Indiana Jones because we weird. watched all the movies. Yeah. We're Indiana Jones people anyways. Whoa! Whoa. This is a fancy picture show. I hope they have this lit up tonight. That'd look cool. Lord, we ain't got nothing like this, do we? So we're gonna do old timey things until the movie starts, like walk around the mall. You know how it was back in the day. This is way nicer than what we have in the mall. It's swank, isn't it? Oh, son, I might get me a seat while I'm here. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> wow, That's, that is swank. Oh man, look at all the license plates. Rods and Bods Museum. So it's a museum. Oh, cool, uh, uh, squeeze. I found a car you'll like. <laughs> Don't go in there, you get a paper. How cool is that, huh? That is exactly what you need. A Barbie Jeep. A Barbie Jeep would be perfect for you. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's perfect. Or oh, right here, what about the mutts and cuts from Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> so they got movie cars in there. You would look perfect in a Barbie Jeep. I would. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Maybe one day. I told y'all Wawa was fancy. This is what you got to look forward to, Ralphie. Taking your wife to stores that you don't have any interest in and waiting for her to be done. I have learned so many things in here I didn't know existed. I don't go out much. There's like a vending machines for cotton candy and fake eyelashes. Who knew that was a thing? 
It's a whole new world. All right, here we go. It's gonna be good, isn't it? This is bigger than the Yellowstone picture show. Dad, I forgot, why are we flying? Because getting there is half the fun. That's literally us. That was pretty good, huh? Mom, did you fall asleep? I think she fell asleep for part of it. It's a longer movie. I liked it. It's very good. Oh, it's all lit up now. Looks so nice. Well, let's go find our motel room. That mom booked while we were at the picture show. So it was a pretty long movie. It's already 9.20. This is the latest we'll be getting into a motel room this trip so far. And I've still got to import video and everything else tonight. It's going to be late night. It is going to be a late night. There's our jewel right there. All right, we made it. It's just like right across the street, basically. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. Ralphie, we could drive that back. Here we are. That ought to be the reason. It don't work. Maybe it's four. It's four. <laughs> We're at the wrong room. Not bad, Mom. Well, we had another good day. We just didn't make it here in time to go to the Buffalo Bill Cody Gray, but we're gonna try to go do that in the morning. It opens at 9 a.m. So we don't have to get up as early as we normally do. We're probably gonna go over to the Argo Gold Mine because we passed it last year in our rental car. It was already closed for the day and I was freaking out about paying for the rental car so we didn't stop, so. <laughs> Looks like a really cool mine. It's one of the biggest and most well-preserved ones in the country. So we're probably gonna go check it out uh, before we head towards Texas. And I thought about it. We're getting in our room late tonight, the latest one. And when my grandparents went on their trip, when they got to Denver, they got in late. And there was no, their room was Their room out. was given away to someone else because there was a convention in town. And my grandpa spent the night sleeping on the hood of the Vista Cruiser wagon. So, Are you gonna make it a thing? No, I'm like not sleeping thing? on the hood of the wagon. <laughs> So we're doing better than he is, even though Ralphie's sleeping in the floor again for 13 out of 14 and nights. he wants so. to do that. Like, we've offered yeah, to switch yeah. it and he doesn't want to He's do He's good it. down there on the floor. So we'll see you tomorrow for day 15. Bye. Bye. Good morning. Let's go see if the breakfast is any good here. Oh, motorcycle, that's cool. Man, they actually have a really nice breakfast set up, don't they? Mm -hmm. Look how fancy she is this morning. This is the best waffle I've ever tasted. What a deal. Sprinkles and all. Do you think you overdid it, bud? No. <laughs> well, that was actually surprisingly good. Good start to the day. All right, let's get packed up for the 15th time. Keep my stuff. Goodbye, my love. It's only about a 15 minute drive to Buffalo Bill Cody's gravesite from where we stayed last night. But we saw Texas Jack Omahonda's grave in Leadville, Colorado, which is not too far from here. And we saw Wild Bill Hickok's grave in Deadwood, South Dakota. So this is the third member of the Scouts of the Prairie show that Ned Buntline put on. I'll feel good at least that I saw all three graves. Awesome. So he is buried on top of Lookout Mountain, Colorado, not Lookout Mountain in Chattanooga. Well, here we are, Buffalo Bill Museum and Grave. And we're on top of it, you see all this? It is beautiful. So most of those mountains out in front of us are 13,000 feet high. The same guy that designed Central Park in New York in the 1800s designed this park as well. That curvy mountain road down there. This is pictures of cars going up and down in 1917. I couldn't imagine going up and down it with mechanical brakes only on the rear. <laughs> Buffalo Bill visited this park soon after it opened and liked it so much he asked if he could be buried here. That's why he was buried here. His wife and daughter Irma had him buried here in 1917 when he died. And right there is a picture of his funeral here. And the guy that built the museum here was Johnny Baker, who was also a performer in the Buffalo Bill Wild West show. He actually performed in the show for 30 years. So it's this way to Buffalo Bill's grave. He's gonna go with us, I think. <laughs> I think they put that sign there for my kids. Wow, he's on the peak of the mountain. He did everything over the top, didn't he? Even his death. William Frederick Cody, Buffalo Bill, 1846 to 1917. 
And Louisa Maud Cody is also buried here, so his wife as well. William F. Cody, Medal of Honor, Indian Scout, 3rd U.S. Cavalry, Indian Wars. I'm so surprised he's not buried in Cody, Wyoming. I mean, the town is named after him. It says the tradition of putting money on his grave started in 1923. A group of Lakota Sioux Indians that performed in the Wild West show with him came here and they put buffalo nickels here because the guy that's on the buffalo nickel was an actual friend of Buffalo Bill Cody's, of course. And so they put buffalo nickels on the grave. If I had a buffalo nickel, I think I'd leave it here, but I don't. I feel fulfilled now. That's pretty cool to me, at least. I would have went to Wyatt Earp's grave on this trip, but he's buried in Los Angeles. I think it's really good that they allow you to visit the grave for free. I thought it was part of the museum entrance fee, but it's not. Yeah, you can go and see it for free if you want to. All right, see you, Bill. Of course, we're here before the museum actually opens. That's why we came to the grave site first. <laughs> he's got his toy now. D don't take his toy from him. <laughs> That's a big toy, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, looking good, guys. Very nice. Oh yeah, you make a good Annie Oakley squeeze. That's a good face. Hey, either. <laughs> they literally just opened the door for us. I love the old paintings on the wall. That kind of short. Huh? <laughs> There's Annie Oakley again. Well, this is bigger than I thought it would be. It, is, it was only thirteen dollars for all of us to get in. Awesome. This is actual stuff from the show. Her actual trunk. She was a performer. You know, I love the picture show. This is one of his personal knives, one of his personal revolvers when he wrote for the Pony Express. I mean, they got authentic stuff in here. Here's programs from the show, Sitting Bull's Pipe. We got souvenirs from the show. This is one of the souvenirs Cody brought back from Naples. It was a coin stuck in lava from the Mount Vesuvius eruption. That's a souvenir calf gun you could buy at the Buffalo Bill Cody Wild West Show. Look, it even has his name in the barrel. Oh. Cast iron. This is the last outfit he ever wore in the show. His last public appearance was November 11th, 1916, two months before his death. So he was working all the way up until he died. Buttons. I just love all the old posters in here. It's so cool. You need to be thinking about decorating the house, okay? <laughs> This is the actual headdress that Sitting Bull was wearing in the famous picture with him and Buffalo, Bill Cody. That is incredible. Oh, you can dress up like a cowboy. That's so cool. Oh, you got the whole gear here, huh? Oh, very nice, Squeeze. Got the chaps and everything. <laughs> this is pretty cool they let you do this. <laughs> oh, y'all are cowboys. Now you just need a horse shot short. Oh, hers bucked. The yours don't work. <laughs> She's been around Mike too long. They used to have these in front of the grocery stores. It was a penny to ride when I was a kid. A penny? A penny, yes. I think they kept that price for a long time because it should have been more expensive probably by the time I was there. There you go, Ralphie. <laughs> This was worth the price of admission, wasn't it? <laughs> Look at all the different calibers. A lot of these are way out of date now. Like this is probably not stuff you can even buy. You'd have to make it. Well, that was really cool. It was better than I didn't think it I didn't think it would be this big or nice and a lot of original stuff. And for $13, that is a deal for all of us to get in. What a beauty. We're gonna try to make it to the Argo Gold Mine Tour. We have about five minutes to spare before they start the tour, so we're gonna try to get there. Well, we've been counting slower traffic. Right in the middle of the road here. It's beautiful up ahead of us. That's the Continental Divide. It's a roundabout. Good thing I'm driving. <laughs> we got a cool thing in there roundabout. Right Idaho Springs. There's the mine coming up. It's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like we've seen this before. We saw it from the interstate last year. The mine tour starts in four minutes and we're not sure that we can even get a spot. Yes, they do. We got a lot of stuff. Mom went the wrong way. We made it with three minutes to spare to get on the tour. Pretty cool in here, isn't it? You excited about it? <laughs> I can't believe we made it in time. It said it was sold out online and we walked in and got tickets. So 
So this wasn't a gold mine. It was a four and a half mile tunnel system. So all the gold mines in the area and silver mines could drop their water and their ore into this four and a half mile tunnel they built. And it would come out here and this big red building is actually a mill that would process the ore. This will be Squeezie's favorite part. She gets to get it right on a bus. That's cool, isn't it? We're off the side of the mountain here. <laughs> Little cemetery over there. Here on top of the mountain now. So this thing was built in the 1890s, I believe. Look at all the big timbers and stuff they used. I'm sure it was very profitable in the 1800s. Oh wow, some big timbers here. This is the actual mill that we're gonna go in later. Wow. It's like Squeezy right there. She's a painter. That's a cool building. Looks like this is the claims office. Tunnel can come on a rail line, we're kind of right on in front of the office here. That's the scale they used. This picture was taken in a mine shaft in 1917. Horse was totally blind, spent his whole life underground pulling mine carts. Get her hard hats on. So this is an Ingersoll Rand compressor, just like ours at the house. And there used to be one here, and they took it out and melted it down for the war effort in World War II. Now we're going into the tunnel. Still draining water to this day. It got flooded in the 1940s. That's why it got shut down. This is the main drainage ditch out of the tunnel. There's tons of water coming out of here. And you can see these are actually other mines around here that drain and it says what their names are. And they filter the water as it comes out so it doesn't poison the water hole. Ooh, it feels nice. Wow, this is a big mine shaft. This is really cool. The backside has like the protective kind of layer. So although this tunnel is four and a half miles long, this is all you can get into because past that wall is flooded with water. Even though it's draining out of that pipe 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's still flooded behind that wall from all the water from hundreds of mine shafts that drain into this. How do you feel about this? <laughs> Sketchy? <laughs> That's the only thing stopping this from flooding. <laughs> we can swim out from here. It's got some big bolts on it. Wow. You can see where the water level was for all, all those years that it was sitting here flooded. It was flooded from 1940 until 2015. There's how long it is. It's like maybe 100 feet or so. I love the sign above the door. That's pretty cool. How cool would it be if they opened up the whole mine shaft for you? That'd be cool, huh? That's cool, the tiny little train tracks there. They said in 1940s when all that water came out, it went right down through here. And all this metal stuff you see around here got swept out of the mine shaft. And these mine carts that are like a thousand pounds got thrown out of here. So this is the elevator shaft here that they would move ore around in the mill. Oh, wow. Look at the size of these timbers. Oh, wow. So all this was built from six redwood trees. They're like at least a foot by foot square or bigger. This is how the stamp mill process worked. So there was huge stamp mills here when it was in operation. Wow. Wow. Look at the size of all this lumber in here. It's all old rough cut lumber pretty neat isn't it very cool building look, look at the size of these timbers look at this i mean my hand's like eight inches long look at that that's crazy gets poured into here so there's a couple like metal bars with gaps in between two metal grates depending look on how thick the concrete is over there the so they poured that concrete in layers and it's five stories tall yeah it supports the whole building along with these redwood this is a cool building. Wow, there's so much equipment in here still. It's great that it didn't get trashed. Children would have the job of sometimes cleaning off those mercury tables, reapply that new mercury layer. Oh, wow. 
so he said the guys operating drills like this maybe only would live like a year because of the silica dust which is like glass particles would get in their lungs they might live a few months more if they smoked because it would coat their lungs in tar to keep the glass particles out of their lungs but they still only have a short time to live so he's working 15 days at four dollars and 50 cents a day to make 67 dollars and 15 days in the mine some of the old glass jars and they were thick back then this is a map of all the mining claims. Look how they kind of overlapped each other. See the shaft overhead that ran everything in the building? Now we're gonna go pan for gold. All kinds of equipment out here. There's an actual stamp mill like they had inside. So after we shake for a bit, we'll move all that kind of center line over these ridges. Gold. That's so cool. We're gonna strike gold here, aren't we? I just saw one. Biggie. Oh, Ralphie struck gold. Look, right there. I got some. Oh, I knew you had gold. Look at all my gold flakes. Yeah. Just like in real life, she's taking all my money from me. The real question is, who got the most gold? I got like four flakes. I got four, four flakes? I got four. Four? One, two, and mom. Mom got us. Every time. Well, wow. see, it's because I have mine. I think I might have Yeah, mine. because yeah. she's got the checking know. account, she might as well have the gold too. Yeah pretty fun huh man this thing looks awesome you know what it kind of looks like tosh the kennecott mine in alaska it's bigger than this i think but there's a building like this in alaska i'd like to go to one day that looks like this is built on the side of the hill uh, that was, that was cool. i enjoyed it more than i thought i would i really have never been into a meal like that with all yeah. those so many antiques in there i would just move right in it it's definitely a really cool tour to do if you're in the area for sure it's a really cool town. Look at the antiques. Well, we're back on the interstate now. We gotta get something to eat, but we're headed towards Amarillo, Texas now to the Cadillac Ranch to see the Cadillac stuck in the ground. Mama wants to really see it. We're gonna try to make it towards Texas, see how far we can get tonight. That is the Mile High Dragway. It's about to be closing this year. Quarter mile track here in Denver. They're about to shut it down. Support your local tracks. Come on. Amarillo by tonight. Hopefully Amarillo by tonight. That'll be best. Wawa says every time she sits in the back, people just stare the whole time. They literally just it. stare. It's kind of, it's kind of scary. They're just not used to seeing at people. Some point, at some point, after like the 30 second mark, I'll start waving at people and they'll loosen up. But some people are just like stoic the whole time. It's scary. <laughs> Stop. Nope. <laughs> well, I've been driving for a while now while mom's been over here in Napa Ruin. I'm going to get off here and get some gas at the Loves. I'm out of fuel. I don't know what I've turned into here. U.S. Army, Fort Carson. Oh my gosh, you're about to have some Army base. Gas <laughs> thing is about out this time i pushed it good. got the cleanup crew here on the windshield they're like nascar ready now well we got 19 and a half miles a gallon must have been my driving mom's got a liter of cola here <laughs> and a fresh nap Woo! there's no telling how We're quick we'll make it to right amarillo here. yeah <laughs> i saw when i was getting off this exit it said registered vehicles only i thought well i got it registered before we left I guess they're talking about army registered vehicles. How many feet can you have sitting on a center console? I cannot believe how long it's been since we've seen a Dollar General. It's, it's shocking, really, that people live like this. We've probably went thousands of miles now without seeing one. Sad it's my heart. Man, that is a big old factory, isn't it? Super cool. Wow, look at that, guys. Man, um, parts of the roof are missing. How many windows are knocked out? I always want to go in buildings know, like that. Ralphie's putting up his window tent here. Mama, don't go home. He's getting hot in the sun. Okay, go. Ready? Ah! <laughs> Send that thing out there, son. We're going to look more redneck than ever. We need to slash back. We need to slow down. Okay, go. Okay, there you go. We got some more facial treatments going on. Corvette spotted. There's 
just wide open prairie and Ford Rangers out here. That looks like a pretty nice house yeah. is falling in over there. I'd move right in. Wind turbine action here. I like one of them spinning. The other one's conspiracy. on break. Conspiracy right there. It's like an old church or something. Wow. Guys, we are back in New Mexico. Woo! Oh my gosh, look at his horn. I think we've seen our first elk with antlers. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's dead in the road over here. Wow. Could you imagine hitting something that size? Whoa, did you see that? There's a car in that building. Turn around. Look at all the old buildings that are just sitting here. There's like a <laughs> Jeep Liberty in that building. Man, look at these old buildings here. It's a church with a car still stuck in it. <laughs> look at these other buildings. There's no police here. It's like it happened a while back and they just left it. What in the world has happened? <laughs> Why would they have not pulled it out or something? So this is Des Moines, New Mexico. And I have no idea why they would leave that in the church. That's the craziest thing. Morning skincare, lunch skincare, dinner skincare, middle of the day skincare. That makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of abandoned buildings right here. Look at that old building back there. My man. Is that a whole town? That looks like a whole town. It's like an abandoned entire town. We're cutting a UE here. We're going to find out. It looks like a whole town's abandoned right here. According to the map, this is Mount Dora, New Mexico. Look, there's an empty house there. This looks like a show enough ghost town, doesn't it? She show enough is. It's a house number. Does somebody still live there? Look at these buildings. Just empty shells. Look. They're old too. I mean, they're yeah, old. they're old. I mean, that's got to be early 1900s at the newest. And look, there's a house over there. It's funny, you look up stuff about ghost towns, but there's just ghost towns all over out here, really. I mean, they may not be as significant as a mid 1800s ghost town is. There's a lot of these late 1800s, early 1900s ghost towns out here. That's crazy. It's just sitting out here alone. So according to the internet, Mount Dora had its own post office from 1908 to 2002 and shut down. So 21 years ago, they lost their post office. That's about how old I thought those buildings might be, early 1900s. Yeah. Are you making a fort back there? Yes. Got Fred Pitty and a little. Oh. Consultant. Very nice. Very and nice. Yeah, the Continental Divide. Oh, this is the Continental Divide in the middle? Yeah, we can only consult each other if we go any all these train cars here, and every one of them has graffiti on it. That's crazy. Literally hundreds of them down through here. Oh, we're back caught up with Van Man. Look at that. Van Man is going. He's having to hold that mirror still, though. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to hold your mirror. We got the whole thing set up. We a whole the curtain. curtain. We're at a feed lot. We haven't feed seen lot. a feed lot this whole trip, have we? Like that. Wow, that is cool. That is a big feed lot. You don't see them except we're right in the middle of the country, do you? Yeah. We should have let them do this a long time ago. Yeah, I wish it soundproof. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> a DG. Yeah, girl. Finally, it's been so long. Just hadn't felt like home without them. Oh, that's an old motel. It's so cool looking. Once again, all kinds of empty buildings. I guess people out west are used to seeing empty buildings laying around everywhere. Guys, put something in these buildings. Here you go. We got an old car right here. Oh, look at that motor home and that old car. Oh, I love it. Was she a crib right in there? They built around it. 
Look at the dinosaurs. We're gonna go ahead and pull in here and get some fuel because we don't know how long until the next gas stop. That cool building. So you won't believe it, but band man over there, his name is Josh and he's a big fan of our channel. So we met here at the gas station talk for like 15, 20 minutes and they've had similar fuel issues with that thing. So they're kind of limping it back home to Texas. Hopefully they make it home safe. I gave my number just in case. As soon as we open the door here, sleigh burning! Yeah, he yelled at us as soon as we got out. We had passed him twice already because we were stopping looking at stuff. That's so cool. It's dark. Now you only got 16 miles again. I got 19. <laughs> What's I the deal? Let this girl drink it up. I kept looking down. She's doing 85, 90. Those van people saw her flying by twice. <laughs> Just a blur, they there. said. I'm trying to get us there, okay? He says he's went through five pumps today. So something's going on weird there. We're back in Texas again. Woo! Not the old service stations. Funny enough, the name of this town is Tex Line, like the Texas Line. Hey, we got an old Buick out here. Nice. Oh, here's Van Man. We're about to pass him again. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> They're doing it for Dale out here, aren't they? It may have been hard to see the van with mom's driving. <laughs> we flew by them so fast, sucked the paint off their doors. <laughs> wow, look at that building. Why would they left that building like that? It's such a pretty building. Beautiful. I guess we're gonna stop and eat because now that we changed time zones, it's after eight o'clock here. Ralphie just spotted this. This tank across the street is just overflowing with whatever's in it. I don't know what it is. That's sketchy. Bam man Josh just passed us. <laughs> They're doing good. Carry on my wayward son. And why are we coming in here and eating? We need it in the car. Exactly, it's too nice to be eating in it. Right. Man, we don't have traffic like this in Tennessee. Combines, wow, those things are monster big, aren't they? Short bus, been there. So many empty buildings. Well, it's getting dark on us out here. We've still got about 40 minutes to make it to Amarillo. Changing drivers, because mom can't see out here in the dark, good. We're in the middle of nowhere. Look at the city lights up ahead, guys, in Amarillo. Oh, wow. That's cool, and we've been out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's 10 15 we finally made it to mom's second home the holiday express <laughs> there's a darn tv in the shower what? why don't we have one of them well that's going to be the end of day 15 of our trip we drove a little over 500 miles today we're still 1100 miles from home we have driven a total of 5,700 miles. Wow. So the plan tomorrow is to go out to the Cadillac Ranch because we didn't get here before dark and check it out. And we got a new thing we're gonna add to the list. <laughs> we wanna go to the Big Texan Restaurant, which is the famous restaurant where they have a 72 ounce steak and if you eat it in an hour, it's free. So we're gonna go eat there tomorrow. They open at 10. So probably skip breakfast and go to the Big Texan tomorrow. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. We get home, Ralph, he'll want to sleep on the floor. <laughs> as much as he's slept on the floor on this trip. Those old buildings. They're empty. Looks like a darn jail or something. That's kind of look like a jail, doesn't it? For sale. Look, they got some Cadillacs over there. And a big Texas man. I see the Cadillacs over there. <laughs> Buried in the ground. How weird is that? So this is Route 66 here. I'm not sure if it's this lane, that lane, or the one over there, but this is the route of Route 66. So this is privately owned. There's like some art people who did this back in the 70s and it, a local millionaire who owned the field let them do it here. So it's still a privately owned field. Look at all the graffiti in the middle of the street. 
Yeah, and on the barriers. I've always heard about this place. I always thought it'd be cool to visit. So they put these here at the same angle as the pyramids. For whatever reason, yeah, they're sitting at the same angle as the pyramids. Man, they are beat up, aren't they? Golly, people have been hard on them. That one over there is missing its doors. Yeah, it's encouraged to spray paint them. I don't know why people are beating them up. It's been painted so many times that this is like inches thick in paint now. Look, this door is like half open and it's the spray paint is holding it together. <laughs> That's how it is in the body shop. Like the stands we paint bumpers and stuff on would get like this, but not this thick. Look at that. It's literally a, probably a foot thick in paint. That's crazy. I was wondering why the casings look so weird, but it's just spray paint. I didn't expect that. I don't think I've ever seen anything painted so many times. I think all that is just paint. Cause that's the old casing there. I think that's just paint, Ralphie. We didn't bring any spray paint with us. <laughs> Look at that, you can't even tell where the door ends and the quarter begins from the paint. Look how bubbled out that is from paint. I really wish you could see the cars better, you know? Like the actual body style of the cars. I think that's just the paint that's peeled off the roof. It fell off hundreds of pounds of paint. Squeeze found some paint that still had some in it. Oh, we got a heart. <laughs> Wrote her name under it. Good job, Squeezy. Is this your first graffiti work? <laughs> How do I get that on you? Only you could get it on you. <laughs> I'd rather have the Cadillacs than the art, personally. Yeah. They should have made some fake Cadillacs. Huh? Ralphie has to climb on it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Every time the Simba. All right, let's get back on Route 66, get our kicks. Get some kicks. After Squeezy climbs some more. I knew they had been graffiti, but I had no idea how many times. Oh, here's the Second Amendment cowboy. This is these Cadillacs we saw from the other side of the highway. So I think he's 22 feet tall. I don't know what his initial purpose was or if he was moved here or what, but he's cool. At least these Cadillacs are not buried in the dirt. This is old Route 66. Looks like burned out building there, old hotel. We had a little trouble finding which road it was. It it calls 40 over here, Route 66. Yeah, El Camino. You can tell that was an old dealership for sure. Definitely looks like some of these buildings need to be redone down here. Takes you right into downtown Amarillo with the big buildings down here. Are y'all starving to death? Yes. <laughs> it's almost 10 o'clock and we haven't ate anything yet. We're saving it up. Oh man, look at the sign, yeah. The big cowboy. <laughs> wow, the building is very uh, noticeable. Bright yellow and blue. Oh, they got a lot of cool stuff out here. I like the big Texan sign. Oh, that's their hotel. Look, you can stay in the hotel. It looks like an old Western town. Man, we gotta get a picture in front of the cow. I think that's the biggest cow we've seen on this trip. Golly. He's a monster, isn't he? Studebaker champion here. Look, got the CB antenna and everything. Look, radio dispatched. That's how you knew you couldn't run away. So this used to be on Route 66, and when they built I-40, basically all their business went away, like everything on Route 66, so they had to move here to stay in business. Sad how that all happened. If you eat a 72 ounce steak here in an hour, one person, and it comes with a salad, shrimp, baked potato, a roll, butter, you have to eat everything, literally everything, it's free. I wouldn't make it past the salad. I think I could kill that steak though. You got some fancy swings, don't they, Squeeze? Ralphie whittling on the porch over here. They don't open for about 30 minutes. Wow, it's big. And I found something I need. How much are they? $70. Ooh. That's what you have to eat in order to get it free in one hour by yourself. <laughs> I'd never make you it. You could eat the steak. I think I could eat the steak. How many steaks did you eat to go to that time? Five. Mm -hmm. I ate five, yeah. That was like 15 years ago though. And they get a cool shooting gallery. That's a cool one. Oh, wow. What a cool building. Mmm, it smells like steak in here. This is where you sit if you're eating for the competition. Do you think all of us could eat the 72 ounce steak together? 
So we just ordered the big 72 ounce steak. So we actually ordered it. We didn't, we're not doing the challenge because it has to be one person. We know we can't eat that by ourselves. So we're getting the 72 ounce steak and it comes with eight sides. So we're getting eight sides and the big 72 ounce steak and we're gonna see if we can eat it in an hour. How about that? Uh, I'm excited about this. This exact place has either been in movies or you've seen something like it, like uh, the movie The Great Outdoors with John Candy when he eats the big 96er. But there's been a lot of movies where they've either parodied this or this exact restaurant where if you eat it, it's free. So I'm excited to be here. I don't know about you guys. The world record is four minutes and 18 seconds. How on earth did they eat that in four minutes and 18 seconds? That's crazy. So it looks like it was a girl, Molly. Schuler ate it. What she must have just VHS taped that thing in. <laughs> How would you even eat that in four minutes? That's crazy. I feel like we're gonna be lucky to eat it in an hour. Of course, ours comes with eight sides, so the normal one doesn't come with eight sides. Well, they're pulling the meat right out of the freezer here, cooking it right in front of you. I think you get to keep the cup. That's cool. Those rolls are awesome, they're really good. I think that may be our big steak right there. She had to team with that one. It's crazy big, isn't it? <laughs> it's four and a half pounds of steak. That's almost a pound for each of us, if you think about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Plus eight sides. There's no way we're going to be able to do it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a big steak. <laughs> that is the biggest steak I've ever seen in my life. Who wants the pepper? You're spicy, Walk. All right, let's cut this thing open. The clock starts now. What? Oh, it is? Yeah, you can tell. We'll see how long this takes. Oh, it looks good. Look at that. Man, looks good. Oh. Put me back in my good. Smack your mama, worthy right here. Smack your mama, exactly. Only squeeze with dip it in ketchup. Only squeezy. We're seven minutes in. Who's getting full? Me. You're getting full already? <laughs> You've had the fries. You're having what? A sweet potato? She's got a baked potato. I, the mashed potatoes and gravy are awesome. The potatoes are good. You got a sweet potato? Okay. Well, I finished my steak. Halfway? I guess I'm going to finish off some of the squeezy steak now. You did pretty good on yours. You're pretty far. Yeah. All right. They made John Candy eat it. Oh, Lord. I polished off half of squeezes and all of mine. I think my eyes were bigger than my stomach. I don't know if I could have ate that steak by myself. Oh, no. I'd have been sick for sure if I did. I'm well, getting full. You love steak there, ain't you? Trying to make room? Yeah. No if I eat this, I'll have ate mine and two thirds of hers. I think we've pretty much called it here. We're at 19 minutes, 45 seconds. What? We probably ate more than half of it for sure. Probably two thirds of the steak we ate, something like that. Almost three quarters probably. We gave it a good effort, didn't we? Yeah, it's very good, very tasty. It was very good, yeah. Delicious. I'm so full. I don't know how in the world they would do it. Man, that was a lot of food. We got two to-go boxes left over. That's gonna be dinner tonight, guys. We ain't wasting that. Okay, we're gonna try our best to walk out of here. Hey, the cups come with it. That's kind of cool. You did a great job. Thank you. Is this the coolest building? It's the coolest building. It reminds me of the White Horse Saloon in Nashville. Yeah. Well, you gotta exit through the gift shop, right? Oh, Lord. Good thing my mother in law is not with us. She'd be buying this stuff. Oh, that's what you need, Ralphie. That is what you need. It's <laughs> so one. big on you. Oh my gosh. It's a real rattlesnake. Oh. Oh my gosh. No, thank you. He's a monster. That's what I've been scared of this whole trip. <laughs> After all that food, Squeezie's getting a free sample of fudge. She's still hungry. She don't care to ask anybody anything. Try it. You gotta go after a present. <laughs> it's a real one. A real rattlesnake. Oh Look at the size of that booger. We saw it moving. Oh yeah, he's moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I've never seen one up close on like. Yes. I don't want to look at what? it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> she bought the biggest hat on her. It wasn't that expensive, was it? $30 for a nice looking big hat, but man, what a hat, honey. You're really fitting in now. Oh man, he's in an electric chair. Oh, oh wow. Ooh. Ooh. Does it do it on camera? Look yeah, it does. They're all jacked up. Oh. Wow, this place is huge. Oh, wow. oh it fits the hat, honey. I bet this is really cool at night. I bet it is too. This is a really cool place, isn't it? Well, that was the most expensive meal we've ever ate right there. But when are you going to be here again? You never know. It's such a famous place. I really wanted to do it with the kids. And it was delicious. It was. It was. It tasted great. I would only give you two warnings if you come here. First warning is there's no refills on your drinks, and they're $3 each. Ooh. I just assumed there was refills. I was wrong. Second warning is the sides are smaller than I thought they would be. I was expecting a huge bucket of mashed potatoes. They did taste great. Like there wasn't a side that didn't taste great. Oh no, it, it, the food was great. Let's head towards Dallas, Fort Worth Let's area. Put the sticker on. Oh, we gotta put a sticker on, you're right. Taking her time. Just, there we go. Okay. <laughs> what a deal. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can you get in the car with that hat? They're Tex. <laughs> oh, my oh my god it won't even fit in the car sorry squeeze you can't see anything in front of you anymore that's definitely the coolest steakhouse i've ever been to it's, awesome. it's, it's beautiful inside. yeah like, and you can order normal food yeah, guys yeah there's like kids meals and stuff and everything you don't have to get a, a monster steak the dg oh that's cool we got about a five hour drive to Fort Worth. We're planning on going to the Fort Worth Stockyards this evening. Hopefully it's open. Oh, you can wear your hat. I'll wear mine. How about that? Yours is way cooler though. It looks like it's a really cool thing. They got longhorn bulls and stuff. So we're gonna check it out. That's new wind turbines sitting out there, ready to be put up. I've never seen that before. I bet those blades are 50 feet long or more. Wow. I have not seen a single Ford Fairmont on this trip. Can you believe that? This makes me sad. DG. DG. You got 63 Impala. Actually, I think it's a bis game. What in the world? The whistle stop. Is it open? You don't need to go there. Look at that old truck. That's so cool. What's wrong, Ralph? Check us out on other platforms at SleeperDude88. They planned the field around the house, didn't they? This sign just said hitchhikers may be escaping inmates. I've never seen that I've sign never before. Seen that. Evidently, there's a prison or jail or something right that here. Looks like there's one right there. <laughs> so don't pick up hitchhikers in this area. <laughs> Are we doing a lotion treatment now? You're going to have the softest legs, Ralph. I will have the softest legs. He will have the second. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Well, let's get gas time again. And dad needs to go to the bathroom immediately again. Crowbar time. Hopefully not. Why are you in a hurry? Hey. <laughs> you feel better? Oh my gosh, it's a murder hornet. We're taking him home with us. What is that? It's a huge. It's a murder hornet. Oh, in my case. I can't wait to get on the road again. What in the world is that? It looks like a pool behind camper they put on a truck frame. My well, mom has got to the point of her daily required driving nap, so I guess I'm gonna drive for a while. And do not be on the screen. 
honey. You promise. I would never do that. You promise me. I would never do that. You promise. <laughs> You're so mean to me. Uh... <laughs> Just everywhere out here, just empty buildings. Every town we come to. What is that? Cardboard? I don't know. We are 5,800 miles in now. Way more than I thought we were going to be. Too soon, Junior. DG. I just hate that Tosh missed it. Oh, there's still cars all around this building. Wow. Roofs fell in on the cars in there. Chilcoth, Texas. I'm U turning this one. Look at this building, how tall it is. Three stories. I'm gonna turn down the street where these cars are. Wow. Look at that. Look at how nice the car in the building is. H, &H Automotive. There's the cars all in that building. Cadillac sitting there with the roof fell down on top of it. Wow. Sad those cars are just sitting there. Pretty sure the government's onto us. This helicopter's been following us for a few miles now. I shouldn't have been talking about the Dodge General so much. They've been listening. What is his deal? His pace car would be. Look at all the bull bunkers here. They're all in that brush. You get the most I've seen in one spot. A bunch of wool here. They're all working. Leftovers on the dash so they can heat up. I think I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> I made a mistake for sure. I pulled this into the wrong. I, I got the stuff out of the back of the car and Tosh like disappeared. I guess she went inside. She's probably bought some, hadn't she? Barefoot Sally here. Oh no. This ain't good. I turn around and get the stuff out and you're gone. I mean, you probably get the stuff out Where are you gonna put the cactus in the car? Wherever, I'll hold it for it if I have to. Oh my gosh. We got my cacti. Birthday present, huh? What's the temperature? A little over 220. It's about the hottest she's got. It is really hot here today. What, 105 today or something? We let it sit there in idle with the air on while we were inside and it didn't like it. Getting a little hot. Well, at least now we got the microwave going while we're driving. Maybe our steak will be ready by the time we get there. We're coming into Fort Murray. Woo! I could not live like that. Thousands of identical houses right next to each other. As far as you can see, it's the same house. Oh my gosh, look oh at the bridges. God. That's crazy. This is ridiculous. Why do people live in towns like this? Doing our breathing, trying to make it through this. So far, so good. Approved. Race and call. Our Dooley and Cobra. Oh, I didn't see the truck. Nice. Very nice. Okay, after some traffic, we're finally getting close to down here. We're really not sure where to park here. Look at these old brick streets. That's cool, huh? Why is there not lanes? I don't know. Oh, cool. Love the old sign. I guess we're going to park back here somewhere. Mom done throw it in reverse. <laughs> in Don't you worry about me. <laughs> Y'all are the biggest tourists I've ever seen. You have nothing to say about that shirt you've been wearing. <laughs> That's true. All right, time for dinner. Most expensive leftovers I've ever had. <laughs> Is it warmed up? I'm kind of like room temperature. We should have put it up there earlier, I guess. Well, that was almost just as good the second time, wasn't it, Tex? 
All right, let's see what this is all about. We have no idea where to go or what to do. These streets are so cool, aren't they, Squeeze? Mm -hmm. Brick streets. We've been walking around for a minute. We ain't found nothing but fancy yet. There hadn't really been anything to go into unless you want to go to a fancy restaurant. I don't know if they let hats like that in these restaurants or not. We're just walking around aimlessly. Well, we found a real longhorn bull over here. Kids on it. Whoa. It's pretty colors, isn't he? I don't think I've seen a bull with a saddle on him like that before. He just hang out here, huh? I don't think I've ever seen one like that close in person. Yeah. Right now we're just trying to find shade. And bacon. And air conditioning. It is super hot today. So they walk Longhorn cattle down the street here twice a day. It's at like 11.30 and 4.30 and we just barely missed the 4.30 one. So we're probably gonna come back in the morning to see that. At least this is shaded over here. Yeah. Oh no. Squeezy in a candy store. No touchy. This looks more like it to me. Man, look at those bullhorns. They go from $200 to $3,500. Man, they got a little bit of everything in here. Wow, look at all the hides. Oh, Tosh will be buying some. I'm really surprised at how few people are down here. I expected this to be booming and there's just like nobody here. That's all you, babe, right there. Big Cadillac Eldorado with the bullhorns on the front. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is already closed for the day, which seems weird to me. It's not that late. Right over here beside our car, you can see the bulls. Oh my gosh, they're huge. Look at his horns. Yeah. There's so many of them just hanging out in there. That's how many they have, all their names and stuff. If only you'd known they were right over here where we parked, huh? We wouldn't have walked. I don't think I've seen this many longhorn bulls in one place. I think he's got the longest horns. That would be such a pain to walk around with 10 foot of horns in the way. They're licking each other over here. Well, I think we've seen what we're gonna see. It's super hot. We're gonna get to the motel room. I think we just came in a bad time. We'll come back in the morning, and try to see the cows come through. Hopefully it'll be a little more lively here and not so darn hot. We're going back under this crazy freeway system. I think this is probably the craziest one I've seen. There wasn't many options here, was there? No. A lot of it was out of our price range, so we went with this. Mom and Wawa have returned from the promised land. You know that because they brought manna from heaven. Oh, two tops. This is breakfast. It's a good thing we don't eat like this all the time. We eat a little worse on vacations. We made it 368 miles today. That's good. Had the biggest steak I've ever seen in my life. Humongous. And I want to go over to the Texas School Book Depository building where JFK was shot. And then we're going to head out of Texas back towards Mississippi. So we will see you guys tomorrow and uh, we'll do some more fun stuff. Perfection is only nine seconds away. Oh well, we're going to. <laughs> Perfection. Now I'm going for a pancake. I think we got an issue here. What the heck? I'm gonna eat that. It's like a tadpole pancake or something. <laughs> we couldn't find Squeeze. She's over there in that chair. I'm about over all this packing in, packing out <laughs> everyday thing. Well, this is a lot different when it's not five o'clock traffic. Just drive right through. Well, we're back. It's kind of muggy. It's about like Tennessee right now, but here in a few hours, it's gonna be like Texas. I feel like 111 today, mom says. I forgot to mention that I stepped on Ralphie at 3.30 in the morning last night. I got up to go to the bathroom and stepped on him. I figured he wouldn't say nothing. I heard, ow, <laughs> in his sleep. Oh, ponies. They had pony rides over there. Oh, I guess that's what they're used for. We used to have a pony named Peanut. Yeah, he wasn't very nice, so we don't have Peanut no more. Ooh, see, ponies are ornery. That's the word, ornery. This is like a railway switching station where they can turn the train around and go back the other way. I don't know, I've seen one up close before. Hello. Hey, buddy. He is oh, he's the same yesterday. I hear a goat. I think it's right there. Who's that? The petting zoo, maybe? Oh, that means my aunt. She's gone. She's gone. Sounds like home over here, doesn't it? I missed this last night. They must have already put them up last night because we never heard no goats last night. I Well, it's not open yet. Hi, boys. We got two babies out. 
So apparently this is the old horse and mule barns here. It used to be wood, but it was destroyed in a fire in 1911 and these were built in 1912. It only cost 300,000 to build them then. It cost you 300 million now. Man, the stockyard hotel is beautiful. These Fort Worth stockyard gateways were built here in 1910, so they're 113 years old. This is cool too, built in 1908. Coliseum, I believe this is where they do their rodeo now. Y'all don't have to worry about me moving to Texas, okay? Too it's hot. Hades here. Too hot. It's a place to visit in the winter, isn't it? Yeah. This and Arizona, both. Right. We're gonna go into the Livestock Exchange Museum up here. They're pulling that woody out of the sand with horses. Man, this is a really cool building. Wait, you mean to tell me we're here before something opens? Yeah, it's not open yet. Look how wide the hallways are in this place. It's only two bucks to get in here. This is a 114 year old light bulb. Who knew we'd get to see something that cool? That's crazy. So the longest one burning has been burning seven more years than this. They're both made by the Shelby Electric Company. They made some good bulbs. They came up with a way for them not to last as long, didn't they? No, thank you. They can keep them. Texas snowman, <laughs> just the hat left and water. That's great. Spanish conquistador stirrup found in a cave on a ranch near Divine, Texas. That is incredible. So the Spanish conquistadors brought longhorns here. I did not know that. So this is the building we're in now. And all this was livestock lots in 1949. They're all going to be cowboys and cowgirls by the end of this. It's not a very big museum. It's just this one room here, but you got some cool stuff in there. It doesn't cost much though. Yeah, it doesn't cost much. I just figured out they have a John Wayne Museum here, so I'm gonna go check this out. The Duke. Man, look, they got trigger here and bullet. John Wayne. Man, he was young there, wasn't he? So this museum was actually put together by his children. This is the real private collection from his family. These are letters from people like Joe Lewis, Kirk Douglas, Paul McCartney, Joan Crawford. Wow. This is his personal script from True Grit, The Alamo, The Shootist. And these are his actual outfits from Red River, The Searchers, The Shootist, True Grit. Wow. His real costumes. So this is a 76 Pontiac Grand Safari Wagon that John Wayne had George Barris customize and raise the roof and the doors because he didn't want to have to stoop to get in the car. <laughs> he was picky, wasn't he? But it's got a 455 in it, of course. It's funny, this is a similar version of the car we drove on this trip, you know? Same glass roof and everything. Very similar to the car that my grandparents drove on this trip. These are all personal letters between director John Ford and John Wayne. Oh wow, that's all his different hats from different movies. This is some of his fan mail. He got more fan mail than me. And that's it. Through the gift shop, of course. You miss me? It's like $26 a person, so they stayed out here if they weren't super interested in it. We're good. We just spent that mail lunch. <laughs> nice. Oh shoot, we got cowboys out here now. Mom's on a mission to go get something for Scooter she saw last night. She says he's gonna love it. Where else are you gonna see this? Oh, Scooter's gonna love his saddle and hat for Scooter, perfect. <laughs> Do you think he'll be scared of it? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's almost time for us to start. Everybody's here now. There wasn't nobody here last night. Howdy, everybody! Here they come. <laughs> I knew you'd love this. She's such a tourist, isn't she? Get that picture now. So he said the world record is 11 foot span on their horns. And some of these here have a 10 foot span. So they're almost world record holders. Some of them weigh over 2,000 pounds. That's cool, isn't it? Wow. Oh, we got a horse. Wow. That's really cool. I've never been near this many longhorn ones at the same time. Good looking bulls. 
Good looking horse. Good looking pig. That was so cool. That was awesome, wasn't it? It's was definitely worth the wait. Very cool. It's super awesome. We just came at the wrong time yesterday. Yeah, we were like, it's okay though. They probably didn't do it yesterday evening anyway. Yeah, they're not doing it today at four because it's so hot. All right, let's get on the road. On the road again. We gotta beat that crowd out of here. <laughs> You're pulling your dad move right here. Yeah, dad move right here. Beat the crowd out. Get in the car quick. We're part of the parade now. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Looks like the bridge is falling down. Right into crazy 12 o'clock Dallas traffic. I don't know how I didn't realize this, but we're over 6,100 miles now. I hadn't been watching lately, I guess. That's crazy. We're 1,100 miles farther than we thought we were even going to be total driving on this trip. Crazy. I've never been to a Six Flags anywhere. Never have I either. Looks fun. It's nice to see a skyline again. Look at these arches. You wanted to see the the arch? It's pretty. So it's just the bridge is what the arches are. Wow. I've never seen a bridge look like that. Wow. I bet that's for a World's Fair. Probably. Wow. That's the building right there. You got a shot right down here. Wow. These buildings are really pretty. Use the left lane to turn into the parking lot. Oh man, there's like a metro train system through here. We're such country folks. We gawk at city things, don't we? Just getting parked here was kind of like crazy to me. That's pretty cool. Ooh, feels nice in here. So we gotta take the elevator up. To the sixth floor where it happened. Wow. That's the old freight elevator. Identical to the rifle found by investigators. This is pictures from when they found the rifle here in the book storage. This was just storage for books. He worked in this building. So he stashed the rifle in between the boxes and ran down. They caught him on the second floor, but since he worked here, they let him go. They didn't think he was the shooter. Well, we got a video. Yeah, they don't come out of curiosity. So 18 witnesses to the shooting died within three years. This is the grassy knoll theory that somebody was on the grassy knoll with another rifle. Here's video evidence showing that somebody was in the window seconds before the shot was taken. Here's the building we're in and these strings are the shots that were taken at the car. Three shots. This is when Jack Ruby shot Oswald in the basement of the police department. The car came down through here and he was shot from up here in this building. And that's where the Zapruder film was going on, the grassy knoll. So right there is where he was at when it happened. Kind of crazy to be here, isn't it? Yeah. That's him moments before he got shot. This is all the different cameras that recorded it. It was the first assassination in history that was actually videoed. There's Jack Ruby's hat. And here's the officer's suit who was holding Oswald when he got shot. Wow, we're going up a level to the seventh floor. This is the camera they used to announce the public assassination. So this was the exact spot he shot from, except for one floor up. The car came down through there, around here, around there is where he was shot. And the first missed shot was there. And over here to the right is the grassy knoll. That's really crazy to be in the same spot it happened, huh? Exit through the gift shop. Exactly. Every time. We're down here in Wawa's happy place now. Walking the streets of the big cities. Also known as my nervous place. Exactly. We're going to walk down to the grassy knoll. History just comes alive to me when you go to a place like this. Like, you hear about it, you read about it, but then when you're actually standing in the same spot where it, it happened. Different. It hits different, that's yeah. for sure. To the right here is what's called the grassy knoll where people think there was a second shooter. People are out in the streets. The fact that we're right here. It's crazy, isn't it? When they talk to you about this in school, you'll know exactly what they were talking about. So the famous Zapruder film was filmed from right up there. He was the only guy who got a video of the entire thing as it happened. Apparently people want their picture in the streets. So this is where everybody was standing that video right here, pretty much. And the trees have grown up, but he was right up there. 
they sped off that way to Parkland Hospital. So the presidential route, I guess, was announced ahead of time. So everybody knew where he was going to be. Same thing with Lee Harvey Oswald. It was announced when he was going to be transferred. Press and other people were allowed in the basement of the police department. And they knew exactly where Oswald was going to be. So that's when Ruby shot him. There's people set up up here with like video going of what happened. Like, I don't know if it's conspiracy theorists conspiracy or- Conspiracy staff. Well, it's a sad thing to happen, but it's kind of interesting to be in the spot where it happened. That is a beautiful building up there. That's so pretty. Well, this was shot from right where we're standing. This is the Zapruder film. So we were standing right here. He was holding the camera just like this. From right here. Wow. That was as they were going right down through here under the overpass. Wow. Crazy. These people are crazy. Look at this. Traffic's going by and they're literally in the middle of the street getting their picture taken. We gotta get our stickers on here. We got the stockyard sticker we got earlier. I repaired Squeezy's sticker she put on. Tried to center it back up. Ralphie's got one from the museum here. Surprisingly, the sticker here was like three bucks. It was cheaper than most of the ones we bought. Make me proud, son. Good job. We can't even touch the seatbelt buckles yet because they're so hot they'll, they'll burn you. And it's not normal heat here. It's a heat advisory, so super hot. Your drink's probably bubbling. What's the name of that building? Oh, it's a museum now. Old Red Museum? It is beautiful. He has a tree in his shopping cart. Man, we are in it, aren't we? This is where I'm most nervous. <laughs> That's pretty. Wow, yes it is. Oh, look at that. Corvette in the 57. Doug Jim. There's some old buildings down here. So I had looked into it before, but I forgot, I guess, that they caught him coming out of the building on the second floor and let him loose because he worked in the building. I think they caught him later in a movie theater. It's crazy, uh, isn't it? And then he was killed like a couple days later by Jack Ruby. And then Jack Ruby died a few years later. Like a lot of people that were involved in it died within a few years. It's really weird. So it looks like we are going to be right at 7,000 miles when we get home. Yeah, this thing already needs an oil change. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't leave it. Yeah, it already needs an oil change, so. But we're holding good oil pressure. Yeah, she's doing great. This has been an ultimate test. It is hot. It's hot. Lord, it's hot. It is incredibly hot. That would probably be one of the only recommendations I would say is it'd probably be better to do this southern route in the winter time. We're going to try to make it to Vicksburg tonight and see some cool stuff there and then probably head on home after that tomorrow. So that's gonna be what, a total of 18 days, I think, on the road, something like that? I think it's 18 days. The fever is calling us in. What better place to stop? Exactly. We gotta change drivers so we can get some miles down. And I can get some editing done. Yeah. Man, this is a big one here. I think this is bigger than the ones we've been. Look how many gas pumps there are. Golly, Bucky's just doesn't disappoint, does it? Never. We need some ice, so we're gonna go in here and get some. We actually don't even need gas right now. Mmm, smells like Bucky's. Gosh, this one's enormous. It's the cheapest I've ever come out of Bucky's. Diet Coke for mom, because that's her love language. Some pecan things for the kids and a bag of ice, 11 bucks. Their ice is $1. Everybody should have it at that price. It's just water that's frozen. This is the most interesting thing that's happened along our route so far. <laughs> Mom has found some onions on the semi-truck. <laughs> we haven't videoed anything for like a hundred miles. <laughs> that's a lot of onions, look at all that! <laughs> it's good Vidalias too. Say again, how do you spell it? <laughs> I think you said it different the first time. We are in Louisiana. She's been doing like 85, 90 the whole way. She's ready to get home. This truck's casing just blew out right next to my door. That was so scary. I thought, I thought we got shot. I actually thought somebody had shot a gun at us. Oh, oh my gosh. Was so I thought the car wrecked or something. Wow. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, it's scary. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, that's scary. Wow, that was crazy. It was right next to my door. Give me a heart attack. I wish I'd have been filming. It threw stuff all over our car even. Yeah, it looks like home here, doesn't it? Yeah. Nothing much to see on the interstate system when you got nothing but trees. We are about to cross the mighty Mississippi River. Look at all these steel bridges here. 
That's a railroad bridge, I believe, to our left, the black one. We are in Mississippi again, guys. Woo! We're in Vicksburg now, which is our destination. This is a good spot. They got a Waffle House here, and they got a China Buffet on the other side of our room. Hey, nice. Very nice. She's done it again. Got something with a fountain out front and pillars. This may be our final time in a motel room. We drove 426 miles today. Is that the most? No. We have about 500 miles to get home. We do the same drive we did today. Eastbound and down. For once you're right. It's about to happen. In the morning, we're gonna go see Vicksburg and see what it's all about. So we will see you guys in the morning. Shoo Oh, they rarely seen mom shoe up. We're gonna get some continental breakfast. Hopefully the steamroller's working. Wee! This is so swank. Oh, I see the steamroller. Squeezy likes biscuit and gravy. She's a biscuit and gravy baby. What's really funny is, this is the first morning we've all decided that we don't want pancakes or waffles anymore. <laughs> 17 days in a row of eating waffles or pancakes for breakfast. Apparently there's a bunch of casinos down here by the Mississippi River. Look, it's like a river boat. Oh, you have to go on the boat to do it? Wow, what a house. We got a DG out here. That old car lot is shut down. Wow, I love the stone building right here. That's a distillery or something. Well, I guess we're here. I don't know what all these cones are for. Oh, wow. That's the ship right there. Big one, huh? Mm. I didn't know it'd be this right here in the open when you pulled up. Man, that is a big ship. And this was built at the beginning of the Civil War and sunk, and they recovered it and brought it here. Apparently, it sank in the Yazoo River and wasn't brought back up until 1964. So, over a hundred years, it sat underneath the river. That's it back in the 60s in Pascagoula, Mississippi when they brought it up. But it was the first ironclad of its time. And after that, all warships were built of iron, not wood. Look at these ships they were using as military ships. They were old steamers that they just converted over to warships for the most part, like paddle boats. That's crazy. So the guy who agreed to build these agreed to build seven of them in a hundred days or he would have to pay $200 a day fine. And they cost $101,000 a piece to build back then. So the Cairo was, I guess, one of seven he built. The Vicksburg Cemetery here holds 17,000 Union soldiers, more than any other national cemetery in the country. Most of these men originally were buried just wherever they lay, basically, or in a ditch or whatever. They went back in 1866 and dug up the temporary graves of all these guys. And all the little square blocks you see out there that don't have a headstone are unidentified bodies they found. So most of the men out here, they don't even know who they were. It's bigger than I thought it would be, guys. Wow. So its top speed was nine miles per hour. So it only sank in 36 feet of water, so the smokestacks were visible mm. still. Its sister ship knocked down the chimneys to hide the location of the sunken vessel. The only way they could identify them, because they all looked the same, was the color of their bands. And this one had gray bands around the top. Wow. This thing had a 22-inch bore and a 6-inch stroke. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Over square. Made 600 horsepower worth of steam. Mm. It's the only surviving ironclad of the fleet. So look, all the mechanisms are here. Wow. Look at those wheels. And it said it could paddle through uh, like water or mud. <laughs> wow. So all this is reconstructed wood to hold the frame together. You can see the original framework down there mm. that this is holding up because this thing sat underwater for over a hundred years. So nobody died when this ship sank. He got hit by a mine, but most of their personal effects were still on the boat. When they pulled this boat up, they saved all the ammunition, all the personal effects and everything that are in that closed museum over there. So that's unfortunate. We only get to see the boat today. So that's where they would drive it from was up there above us in the pilot house. They had to shovel a ton of coal an hour to keep it running. Um, that is literally a ton. This was like sheets of iron here, but they actually use railroad iron beams right next to each other up to there. I couldn't imagine how heavy that would be. That's some serious armor though, isn't it? Yeah. 
the officers got to sleep beside the paddle wheel and the guys that were not officers had to sleep up here by the boiler so it was super hot up here if you're sleeping up here and not so much back there that would be unfortunate to be in mississippi sleeping beside a it, steam it engine oh whoa dude he got some moves don't he so it was put into use in january of 1862 and by december it was sunk it wasn't even used the whole year and that's the only known photo of it when it was together well that ship's really cool it's kind of a bummer that the museum's not open it looks like if the museum's open you can walk down in the lower parts of the ship which we weren't allowed to do it's sad this many men died here isn't it? especially since it was americans killing americans so we're going to go through the tour road here whatever that is so up here on these hills, the Confederate troops had cannons. They would shoot at the Union ships from up here on the hill. They really want you to read some stuff around here, that's for sure. A lot of cannons. That shoots a 10 inch ball. Man, they got 24 pound, 4.2, 32 pound, all kinds of different cannons here. Man, it's some big boys. We got a lesson on this at the Alamo, didn't we? Oh, yeah. About the different kinds of shots they shot out of cannons. I guess this is the kind of walls they would build to shoot the cannons from so it couldn't take hits from boats from the Mississippi. And when the Union Army took the Mississippi back from the Confederacy, they basically turned the war because now they had control of shipping through the Mississippi. It. Says over 100,000 men fought here in 1863. Wow. We gotta hit the visitor center for Squeezy. That's the only thing she likes about places like this is visitor centers. Yep. Oh, theater, park maybe. Don't mind if I do. Well, this is cool. This is our first church pews. Yeah. It seemed as if heaven and heaven turned everything loose to destroy us. This little guy here was a Medal of Honor recipient from the Civil War. He's like the same age as you. He was on the Union side. He went behind enemy lines to send a message and got shot and wounded. Look how little he was. Poor kid. Most of the residents of Vicksburg dug caves in the hillsides because there was so much cannon fire they would die if they stayed in their houses. So they lived in caves. There's another tree with a cannonball stuck in it. It's so humid outside. We walked outside and our glasses all steamed up. You driving or me? You are. Mama, mom's gonna get us home. <laughs> she Boy, says mom will get you home. <laughs> Let's head towards the house. We got about 500 miles to go. It's bound to die. Can you believe we're actually gonna be home tonight? No. It's bittersweet. It's so weird. I, I've it's enjoyed like... this trip a lot. I'm kind of ready to be home. But oh, I'll see God, this, trip's been, this trip's been awesome. I'm but like, I'm like... also been homesick. So this is seven days longer than we've ever been on a trip. Wow. It's nice to not have that hard deadline to be back like I was used to with my old job, you know? Hey, you gotta get this one straight, Wah. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Wait, that's not Okay, crooked it is. Just go. You got it. You nailed it. It's not really Look at that, guys. Look at all our stickers. And we didn't even get one from every single place. We got most places. All right, we got the picture by the cannons. Let's get on the road. The We're on the interstate and somebody left the back window open. They go, get back there and like close it. Just get off this exit, I guess. 100% mom. Oh my gosh, 40. Hey, can I get crazy? We heard all this wind noise that. when we got on the interstate. That's so funny. I wonder what flew out. Man, we had that spoiler engaged, didn't we? All right, let's try this again. Okay. At least we got to see another Dollar General. It was worth it. So we're not going to Jackson. Okay. Oh, you did it. Oh man, there's some big military helicopters here. Back in Alabama. Yeah! Woo! We hit the Alabama line and it starts pouring the rain. Coincidence? I think not. Our blade has come out of its track and it's now rubbing the windshield. We got a Volvo 740 turbo station wagon in front of us. Always wanted one of those. This guy is braver than me. He's got his Wild West podcast going on. He won't know we're in the car. He won't hear nothing we say. The 88 museums that we went to didn't teach him enough. He's going to learn more about these Wild Western Cowboy Brothers. Well, we got off the interstate here in Alabama, and this is the first signs of home right here. Apparently, there's a wreck on the interstate or something. It's having us uh, reroute on this back road through Alabama. The fact that you didn't get pulled over on this trip amazes me. We're not home yet. Oh my gosh. 
we've got the DG and the pig side by side. Oh, snap. We should get our vows renewed right here, honey. Exactly. It's holy ground. We pulled in here for gas and Squeeze is watching the TV at the gas pump. I told you this is how he watched TV. You don't want no roasted chicken right here? No, thank you. We're about two hours from home still. All kinds of antique houses down here. That one's leaning, isn't it? Back home in Tennessee. Woo! 18 days and 7,000 miles later. So we averaged 389 miles a day. That's awesome. So I did not think we would be able to average that high. But we did. So that gives us kind of an idea if we ever did another one, how many miles is kind of achievable. Mom drove most every mile. Go, Big Booty Tuesday. Let's go. Go, Big Booty Tuesday. <laughs> This is almost comical. We're gonna hit 7,000 miles right before we pull off our exit to our house. That is incredible. Well, it's incredible. We thought it would be 5,000 miles. Yeah, 2,000 miles more than we thought it was gonna be. And we hit it right at our exit at our house. That's crazy. We could not have timed this better. Look at that. Wow. Woo woo! <laughs> 7,000 miles. We're here. Yay. This is our exit. Mimi is waiting with the pets, so we're gonna see what the dogs and Rocky and all them think about us being back. Rocky may have forgot us. He forgot who we were. Wow, it's so it's our house. It's our house. Hey, there's the RV still sitting there, broke wow. down. There she so happy to see Ellie. Oh, Ellie. <laughs> I think she's excited to see you. Hi, Scooty. Are you scared? <laughs> He's just scared. <laughs> You're grown up now, Tater. You're so much bigger. Look at you. He grew so much in three weeks. Walkie, what have you been doing, huh? Have you been so good? Has Mimi been taking care of you? Granny. Hi, girl. You should have went with us, Granny. You'd have loved it. You'd have fit right in in Roswell. Hi, buddy. We missed you. Phone snip. Get one in. <laughs> we'll be back in the shop now, Rocky. Back to normal. Ralphie's pulling the car up to the door so we can unload it. <laughs> Every time. She's a keeper. I bet that old girl appreciates that, huh, Ralph? Yeah. It's been completely loaded down for the last three weeks. Was it better than last year's trip? It was better than last year's trip because last year we broke down. Would you want to move to one of these places? I would not want to move to one of those places that we were at because it was hot, it was sweaty, but there was good food. What was your favorite place we went? My favorite place that we went was the Grand Canyon. Who's the better driver, mom or dad? Mom is the faster driver, so pretty sure she's the best driver. Where did I like driving in the car the best? I liked it in the back seat, but when it was hot, I would like it in the middle seat or the front seat better. My favorite food on a trip was definitely the steak and the stuff. I was with the steak that, yeah. Where was the favorite motel that we went to? Me, personally, the favorite motel room that we went to was the one that had s'mores and that stuff. And I had like a hot tub and stuff and had ice cream. That was really good. Did you like the return station we were in? Necessarily not really because we were all crammed in there. I would more likely to be in the RV. But the wagon, you get to go in motel rooms, so that's good. Name the states that we visited. Oh, that's going to be really hard. Okay. Um, I know that we went Virginia, Texas, Tennessee. Oh, I got to think about this, huh? For... Virginia, Texas, Tennessee, um, Arizona, Michigan. Um, I, yeah, that's all I got. 
What would you have done different if you were planning it? If I was planning it, I would have done a lot of things different. I would have probably spent like most of the days at the beach and I wouldn't even go out to the west. I'd probably just be in the beach. Yeah, I would not go to the west. And then I would probably have a bunch of snacks taken because I would probably be too cheap to go out anywhere. Favorite animal that we saw was probably bison, I guess. I really miss Tater and Allie and probably Penelope. She's my cat and I just love her. I'm not surprised it didn't break down because I knew I already ran, so I didn't have no doubts about that. What was it like being in a car with your family that long? Well, <clears throat> no hard feelings, but it was really, <clears throat> yeah, it was like we're all crammed together and yeah, so. Boys, gotta get my shoes on. Was it better than last year's trip? Yes, because we didn't break down. We had a great time. Would you want to move to one of those places? I mean, I would like like Colorado or Yellowstone. Wyoming, because it's not so hot. What was your favorite place you, we went? I did like the Buffalo Bill Center for the West or whatever museum. That was really cool. Or the Grand Canyon or Yellowstone. There was just a lot. I can't pick one. Who's better driver, dad or mom? Mom gets his places faster, but dad drives better. Dad. Where did you like riding in the car the best? Up front with my mommy. How was me? What was your favorite food on the trip? The Chinese. It's awesome. Crab Rangoon. We got other stuff. Fruit. They got fruit there. What was your favorite motel we stayed in? In Wyoming with the um, game room. That was awesome. I did like that we took the station wagon because I just think it's more reliable. We drove it more, like on the drive home with it. So, name the states we visited. Okay, Alabama, Missouri, Illinois, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Illinois, Missouri. Not Missouri. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, what is it? Illinois. Oh, Alabama. What? Illinois something, and then Alabama, then Georgia, then Tennessee. What would you have done different if I were planning it? Um, I would have honestly like done it the same way because that was just really cool. My favorite animal was probably the buffalo. They were awesome. They were huge. What did you miss the most about home? My little tail, the little kitty. Are you surprised it didn't break down? I am not surprised at all. I knew that thing would make it. She's a jewel. I know my cars. What was it like being in a car with your family that long? It kind of got annoying, not going to lie. Hallelujah, amen. Jesus Christ. Woo! Was it better than last year's trip? Um, most definitely better than last year's trip. Because for one, we um, broke down last year, so we didn't break down this year, so that was a plus. Would you want to move to one of those places? Um, definitely not Arizona or New Mexico or Texas because they're so hot. You know, it's like a hair dryer. I could not stand that all day. Probably um, Wyoming or Montana. It's cooler. It was just really pretty up there. A lot of mountains and stuff. It was really beautiful. What was your favorite place we went? Probably Grand Canyon or Yellowstone because they were just so crazy. It, it wasn't real, like it was so beautiful and so. Who's the better driver, dad or mom? Definitely mom. Mom gets us there three times quicker than dad can. So <laughs> yeah, dad's a slow driver. Yeah, sorry dad. Where did you like riding in the car the best? Probably the back when it wasn't so hot because I was just not wedged between my brother and sister. <laughs> that was probably the best because I could just look out the window. What was your favorite food on the trip? Probably the steak, the big Texan steak. That was really good food. Not only was it a lot of food, but it was really good food. Probably the best food I've ever tried in my life. What was the favorite motel we stayed in? Probably the one in San Antonio, Texas that was like the river walk one. I can't remember, but it had dinner and breakfast and that was just a plus for me. It had a pool on the roof. Oh my gosh. It was probably the best one to ever stayed in. Spot on.
Did you like that we took the station wagon? I'm glad we took the station wagon. It was, it's a good car. I swear, every time we, I sat in the back, people would um, either laugh or like stare or wave. They did all these kinds of different emotions when I would, when me and Ralphie sat in the back, they would all like be waving at us and stuff. And I think that was a good part. I'm glad that we took the station wagon. It was a really, it was really fun. Name the states we visited. Oh, okay. Here we go, something I can actually do. So we came from Tennessee, we went through Alabama. Georgia, I don't know if we came, I don't know if we went through that the first time or the, I know we came through Georgia on the way back. Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Arizona, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, back home. Pretty sure. Okay, we did that. What would you have done different if you were planning it? Since we went northern route the first time and we came the southern route, I would still do the southern route, but I would probably go back through South Dakota and that way down because I feel like that would like complete it more, but I'm really glad that we went the way we went because I feel like South Dakota's our bad luck state, if you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like if we went through there, we would probably break down again. What was your favorite animal we saw? Probably buffalo. They're really pretty animals. Yeah, that was probably my favorite. We saw a bear too. We couldn't really see it up close, but what's more dangerous, a bear or a buffalo? Who knows? What did you miss the most about home? Probably friends and family, honestly. It's a lot sitting in the car with your brother and sister and your mom and dad for 18 days. It's, it's a lot. Um, I kind of miss my friends and the fam jams, like civilization. Are you surprised it didn't break down? Yes, highly um, surprised. I cannot believe it didn't break down. I was, that, it's just incredible. It's impeccable, yeah. After we passed like Denver, Colorado, come back home, I was like, we're, we're, we're gonna break down. Oh, we're gonna break down. I was just hoping and praying to the Lord that we weren't gonna break down, which we didn't, so that was really good. She never doubted her. What was it like being in a car with your family that long? What's the right word? Stressful, loud. It was fun until it got really hot and we all had to sit in the middle. Like when somebody sit, sits in the very back and there's space between the two people in the middle seat and I had to separate Squeezie and Ralphie so I had to sit in the middle and that was a mess. <laughs> but it was, it was a really fun trip. I'm really glad we went on it. Probably will never forget that for the rest of my life. Okay, I guess I'm done. Alrighty then. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Oh man, what a trip. Wow, 7,000 miles. I really can't believe we made it, honestly. I must have bought the best car in America, is all I can figure. You know, like last year I had planned all these places we wanted to go, things we wanted to see, and after it didn't work out, you know, this year, it was like I planned out the route, kind of, where we wanted to go, but the stuff that was like way out, you know, Utah and Wyoming and all that, I was like, we'll figure those out if we get that far. And just the fact that we were able to make it that far, I'm so happy that we were able to actually finish out the trip. It all worked out. We didn't run out of time, really. Was there things I wish we would have saw? Yeah. Really wanted to go to Mesa Verde, Silverton, Colorado, Monument Valley. There's a couple things in there in like the middle between Utah and Colorado, an area we really weren't in that I wish we would have saw, but it's all good. We saw more than most people ever get to see. I'm just really glad we were able to do it. The wife and kids act like it's changed me. I, I don't see any evidence of that. Um, I really enjoyed going and seeing all the cowboy stuff. It was really fun. Was it better than last year's trip? A hundred percent better for me. I know the kids enjoyed last year's trip. I did, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy last year's trip, but when we broke down and just having car trouble, I didn't even sleep hardly on last year's trip until later on the trip. Slept like a baby on this trip. I'm not saying I wasn't worried at times, especially early on I was worried a little bit about the car because I thought, man, you know, what if we break down in the middle of nowhere? And like times when we were, uh, traveling in areas that didn't have cell coverage. I did get a little nervous from time to time, but not too bad. I kind of tried to keep it under control. Tried to not think about the bad things that could happen. You can kind of ruin a trip worrying about the bad things that can happen. Shouldn't even worried about it, you know, it all worked out. We were very blessed with this trip. To be able to have that much time to go, 
to be able to go to those many places. It was kind of bad timing financially because we've just been building this building and going on this big trip because this is like the most expensive trip we've ever went on ever. I haven't added it up. I don't even think I will. <laughs> I don't really want to know exactly what it cost, but it was very expensive to go on this trip. We tried to watch our money where we could with like going to grocery stores and eating and stuff, packing our own lunch when we could, but it would have definitely been cheaper to take the RV and stay in campsites and have our own cooktop and our own refrigerator. But we tried that. It didn't work out this time, but maybe next time. Would I want to move to anywhere that we went? I don't think so. Some of the really beautiful stuff we saw, like especially in Texas and Arizona. Although it's beautiful, way too hot for me. Not that I couldn't survive there, but man, I, I would be not liking the heat. I prefer cold weather over hot weather. Wyoming is beautiful, Montana is beautiful. I don't know that I would wanna live there. It's kinda of out in the middle of nowhere for me. So I, I think I'm happy where I'm at. Kinda of the middle of the country, not too cold, not too hot. Close-ish to the coast. I think we're good right here. What was the favorite place we visited? My two favorite places, Oddly enough, we're like the two farthest spots we went, really. Tombstone, Arizona, and Cody, Wyoming. I'll add Yellowstone into that because I really enjoyed Yellowstone. I really enjoyed seeing the buffalo there. That was awesome. Some of the springs and stuff, geyser basins were awesome. But the Buffalo Bill Cody Center of the West, Old Trail Town, Tombstone, Arizona, that was my favorite stuff we went and saw. <laughs> I obviously enjoy Western stuff. I enjoy Western history and going to those museums, going to those historic places was next level for me, especially going to Tombstone and being at the OK Corral gunfight site, getting to go in the bird cage, you know, seeing the Oriental, all those famous places. I really enjoyed Tombstone. I would love to go back to Tombstone in the wintertime. Uh, it was awesome. Obviously, I'm the better driver. We'll just leave it at that. Definitely the best meal we had on the trip was the Big Texan 72 ounce steak. If we went there tomorrow, which I couldn't afford to go there tomorrow, if we went there tomorrow, I would not get the 72 ounce steak. It is definitely enough food for probably six adults. If you go, make sure you have a big party or order a smaller steak. I figure we may never be there again, so I might as well go all out and get the 72 ounce steak like you've seen in movies and stuff. But it was excellent. Favorite motel we stayed in? I mean, a lot of the motels were the same because mom booked them. I think the one that we stayed at, West Yellowstone, Montana, was probably the nicest place we stayed in. It was really set up cool. They had a lot of neat stuff. That's probably the same thing the kid said, if I was guessing. I enjoyed taking the station wagon, but with all the work we put in the RV, I wish it would have worked out where we got the RV running months before we left and had time to take a short trip in it locally, kind of work the bugs out of it and then take it. That would have been best case scenario. But I enjoyed taking the wagon, especially with the backstory of my grandparents taking the same kind of station wagon on their trip. I really enjoyed getting to go to the same places they were at and try to match up the pictures that they took. I really enjoyed that, knowing I was at the exact same place that my dad went, my grandparents, my great-grandparents went. I really enjoyed that. So I enjoyed taking the wagon. I wish the RV would have worked out though. Name all the states we visited. Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, and then back through New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee again. I think I got them all. Favorite animal we saw? Definitely the buffalo herds. Seeing the bison, and the buffalo, whatever you want to call them, in those huge herds and little in Lamar Valley in Yellowstone was awesome for me. Probably the biggest thing I missed about home, not having to check in, check out, unpack, pack back up, which if we would have had the RV, we wouldn't have had to do that. Sleeping in the same bed every night, that's what I miss most. I am surprised that we did not break down. I didn't even have to put a quart of oil in it. I didn't even have to check a casing or a wheel bearing or nothing. I mean, aside from the dinging on the dash that it was doing at the beginning there and it kind of quit doing later on, I mean, we didn't have to do anything to that car. I think I bought the best car in America. It's a keeper for sure. The fact that you can buy a car that's that old, you know, a 31 year old car and take off across the country on a 7,000 mile road trip and it not break down at all. The air worked the whole time. Everything worked. Yeah, that car gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I'm surprised that we didn't have some sort of issue somewhere. Very minor, just noises or things it did. Aside from that, 
that car did awesome. There was definitely some challenges about being in the car with each other for that long. The kids were getting on each other's nerves, especially towards the end there. It seemed to correlate with wherever Squeezy was sitting. If she was sitting somewhere, whoever she was next to was having problems. It probably went longer than she wanted to go and more hot areas than she wanted to go, which I can't blame her on the heat. It was very hot. Ralphie and Wawa acted very well for the most part. <laughs> but they did get on each other's nerves in the car. Me and Tosh get along really good. We really didn't have problems on the trip. Yeah, I loved it, obviously. I love cowboy stuff. I love the Wild West. I love history. I enjoy seeing new places. I love traveling, so it was a 10 out of 10 for me. I really can't believe we were able to do it. I can't believe that I have a job that allows me to go places like that and to make a living from it. We really appreciate everybody that watches because if it wasn't for you guys, this would not be possible and I'm very grateful. Oh, oh, sorry, my revolver got caught on the chair. Hi. Okay, was it better than last year's trip? Absolutely. It was less stress, for sure. Secondly, we got to see a whole lot more stuff and go a lot more places. Would I want to move to one of those places? No. No, I'm happy here in Tennessee. I like our green grass and trees. The desert is beautiful, but it's too hot and too many rattlesnakes and too much sand and dirt for me. So I'm, I'll just stay right here. What was your favorite place we went? Probably Yellowstone because I got to see so many different animals and it's just like crazy. It's mind blowing. It's like all these volcano little things that are spewing out and bubbling up mud. You can go on these trails and like, oh, you'll turn a corner and there's a buffalo. So yeah, it's wild. This question shouldn't even be on here. Who's the better driver, mom or dad? Hello, it's me. What was your favorite food on the trip? Definitely the steakhouse that we went to. That was thebomb.com. What was the favorite motel we stayed in? Probably the one in Montana for Yellowstone. They had like cool s'more things to do at nighttime and you could do your own laundry for free, a nice pool. So that was pretty cool. Did you like that we took the station wagon? There's things about the station wagon that I like better than Mini Winnie. As far as its size, and I knew I could probably drive it better or easier. I don't like getting motels. I don't like staying in motels. It's very stressful for me because I don't like to pay for motels. Like I want to stay in a $600 a night motel for like 80 bucks and that doesn't happen. So there's a struggle with me booking rooms and mentally it's hard for me. So I would have liked to stay in my own camper, had my own bed, my own stuff, been able to not eat out so much. That would have been nice, but um, that didn't happen this time. Name the states we visited. Okay, so we left Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, did I say that? Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Colorado, where we go to Colorado? Colorado, maybe back to New Mexico, Texas, Mississippi, back to Alabama, back to Tennessee, Georgia. We did the Georgia there a little bit. What would you do different if you were planning it? Um, I mean, I really don't know. I don't want to do anything different. What was your favorite animal we saw? Probably the buffalo. I always like to see buffalo. Um, they're just crazy big and I don't know, I love them. What did you miss the most about home? Probably just my bed we had to pack in and pack out every night and i had to worry about everybody's outfit for the next day and clothes i need to wash i miss the animals more than i should i worry about them are you surprised the car didn't break down i am really surprised i didn't think there would be like a catastrophic failure like an engine or something but i thought we would have like a ball bearing or something like that U joint something with me rolling 80 85 I thought something would probably break. What was it like being in a car with your family that long? It was interesting. Most of the days weren't that bad. I mean, once you drove a couple hundred miles, the kids start getting restless and picking and poking, fussing and farting, fighting, fussing and fighting, yeah. After a while, it is too much. But especially the days where it's cooler and there was one in the back that really helped out. Overall, it was a great trip. Is a once in a lifetime thing. I would encourage you guys to try to get out and see the world. It's really easy to get stuck in your little box about your, you know, your own state, your own town, and not see. There's so much, so many great, beautiful things out there to see. Don't let life pass you by without seeing some stuff. Very thankful that we got to do that. And yes, I'm a crybaby. Makes me want to cry every time I think about it. He loves his outfit. 
He just loves it, doesn't he? Look how handsome you are, cowboy. He's a cowboy now. He's got a saddle and everything. Well, guys, what a trip we have been on. I mean, whoever gets to do something like this, we're definitely very blessed. Right. And we appreciate everybody watching. Oh, 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 oh Scooter's oh. hat fell off. He's so excited. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. It's a little scary. It's a little scary. Oh, Daddy will share. Daddy will share. I really enjoyed, though, tracing the steps of my grandparents and their trip. That was really neat to do. We got to see some amazing places, see some cool animals, eat some good food, stay in a lot of Holiday Inn Expresses, <laughs> for sure. Definitely need to get contacted by the CEO of Holiday Inn Express. Maybe next year we'll do something big yeah. again, you know? Figure out a new route to take. Maybe the East Coast this time or something. There Ooh. you go. Scooty is excited. Him has been so good. <laughs> oh, there you go. He's going to choke on that. <laughs> I'm good. The rest of you are so good. We just I'm ate cold. breakfast. Now, this ended up being 5,564 video clips and 27 hours of footage. You better get on that. So, I'm going to be editing for the foreseeable future. I'll probably be editing for like three weeks, honestly. It's probably going to take forever. I'm going to be living out of a recliner for the next few weeks. <laughs> we didn't even have to break into the emergency vines. We did good. We didn't have to put water in it. We didn't have to do anything. Didn't check a bearing. Hey, she rolled out too. Several times I looked at her mom was doing 90. <laughs> but, I mean, they say this trip has changed me. I don't see that. I don't see any evidence of that. No, not at all. You know, I even learned some history on this. I listen to a lot of history stuff anyway, but I learned a lot of new things I didn't even know. But you can check out our second channel at Sleeper Dude Too. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Sleeper Dude 88. You can buy our merchandise down below. You can click on our website. It'll take you to our website. And we'll send you our shirts that are at our house to your house. Wow. It's a new thing. You should check it out. It helps us be able to provide for our family. Well, let's go see the goats. We have not got to see them in 18 days. So we gotta go check them out, see what they're doing. Rocky was doing pretty good last night, but I'm sure he wants some of these vainas right here. And we haven't even seen vainas since we've yeah. been home. We gotta go see her. Come on, Scoot, come on. Dun, 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 dun. Stallion. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, stallion. <laughs> Look at that, my noble feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, oh, Rocky Jr., are you first? That's good, isn't it, Granny? Gum, that stuff. Here they are. Rocky looks scared of his head. He looks slicker, don't he? He's yeah. sleek looking. Oh, hello, Granny. There you go. Here you go, Granny. You want the last piece? She's like, I don't hear words. <laughs> Wee! Look at your nose. It's got so much mud on it. Wayne, we should have took you with us. Yeah. You would have been so good out there. You would have ate the whole steak. We saw a couple of her out there, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We really appreciate everybody that watched our channel. The fact that we're even able to do a trip like this is just because of people like you and the good Lord above. I can't believe I'm able to make a living by doing what we do every day. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, Jesus saves. And George does draws. Exactly. Well, they need a close up on this right here. Look at this. The longest I've ever went without shaving, it's 19 it's days. Awful. You're so hairy looking. I'm a woolly booger. <laughs>